Hey gang and welcome to this tutorial about Redux using Redux Toolkit. Now for this tutorial I've brought in Anthony Sistilli to teach you and he's a great instructor, he's got a whole bunch of really good React based tutorials on his YouTube channel so definitely check it out and subscribe to it if you want to see more of his stuff. The link is going to be down below. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Anthony so we can teach you all about how to use Redux with Redux Toolkit. Hey everyone, and welcome to this crash course on Redux Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how Redux Toolkit works. I'm going to explain what it is, how to set it up, and why you should be using it in your modern React applications. I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with React. If you don't, feel free to check out my Learn React series on YouTube as well. But yeah, if you find value in this video, don't forget to subscribe to NetNinja and make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment on what video he should do next. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First of all, let's understand what React Toolkit is and what it aims to do and how state management outside of the React ecosystem works as a whole. If you had a counter component, for example, and you chose to specifically split up your application into two different components, the first one being the component that increments and decrements, so it has the increment and decrement button, and second of all, the component that displays the count, it might get a bit tricky. In this component, the green component over here, you might have your React use state where you would keep track of the component state and the counter. So for example, if you increment the count at zero, um, you know, the state of that count would be specifically in this component. Now, if you wanted to display that count in a separate component, however, that was living in a separate file, um, that was also being rendered by your top level app component, which is here in black, how would you get the state of that component in the counter, that count variable, into another component? And this is one of the typical dilemmas that a lot of React developers faced before there was really a good state management option out there. And we got introduced to something called Redux. You can think of Redux as something that lives external to any React component that you can store variables inside of. So for for example, we would have a separate state over here where we can keep our count variable. So let's go ahead and make that a tiny bit smaller. And it would keep track of the variable uh, count and any other variable that you would want. And then when you hit the increment button, instead of incrementing a state variable inside of this counter component, you would instead call a function in what is known as a reducer that would actually increment or decrement the count based on what you want. And then to display the count over here, all you would have to do would be to read from this Redux store. So in essence, all Redux is, and any state management library like React Context or MobX is an external place to store state where any component in your application can access it without having to pass in variables from component to component to component. And it's really useful, especially when you get to a lot more complex use cases and complex React applications. Now for this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be transitioning this basic counter that I've created on codesandbox.io, which is a great place to write basic React code just to get the hang of something. And the link to this will be in the description of this video. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this counter from being just a basic counter that uses React use state, and we're gonna transition it to be a counter that uses Redux toolkit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a Redux folder over here. Now we're gonna be following the quick start video of uh, the quick start tutorial on the Redux toolkit documentation. And I'm going to walk you through what each step of this documentation is telling you to do and how it sort of all works. So the first thing we're going to have to do is install Redux Toolkit and React Redux if you haven't already. If you're using, um, if you're following along on VS Code or anything else, uh, an IDE on your computer, all you have to do is open up Terminal, go into the package, um, the directory where the package is, and npmi at redux.js uh, slash toolkit. And also you're going to need the regular React Redux library in there as well. So so I already have those installed. If you're following along on Cold Sandbox, all you have to do is click Add Dependency, type in the dependency you want to install, for example, React Redux, and just go ahead and click it and it'll automatically install it. 
Now, the way this is going to work is in every, even with regular Redux, as well as Redux Toolkit, the first thing we have to do is create a store. And this store is sort of going to be, we're not going to be touching it very often once it's created. It's sort of like an initial setup for Redux Toolkit, but it essentially is going to be the thing that we create that we pass in to our top level component, which is index.js, to give every component under it access to any variable stored in Redux. So the first thing we're going to do once we oops, once we have our folder over here, we're going to go ahead, we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call this file configure store oops, configure store.js, just like that. And if you want, we can even call it just store.js to make it a bit more simpler and keep it in line with the documentation. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a function called configure store from the React Toolkit library. And we're going to just go ahead and set it up. Just like that. We're gonna export it as default and we're gonna call it and pass in an object. And that object is just gonna have one key, which is the reducers. And right now that's going to be empty. Now in Redux, for example, in our example, we're only gonna have one sort of store that's gonna be the store that holds the count. But as your application gets bigger, you might have separate stores for separate things. For example, if I'm making a website that is able to check people out, I might have one store where I keep the user information. I might have another store where I keep the items and the prices of all those items in their cart. And I, have, I might have another store that keeps all the possible items that that person could have um, when looking and browsing our website. Like, for example, if it was Amazon, one store for all the items, um, you know, that would be recommended to that user, for example. So this is where we would put all those different reducers that we have. And don't worry about, uh, about it for now. We don't have any reducers. We're going to get to that in just a second. But after we do this, the second thing we're going to do that is still part of setup is we're going to go to our index.js and we're going to pass in a provider component that will take in that store and we need to make sure it is above the app level so that every child of um, that provider inside of our app gets access to any variable in that store. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import the store we created and we're going to import the, com uh, the provider component from React Redux and then we're simply going to go ahead and make it a parent of our application. Like I said, don't worry if this is a bit um, overwhelming right now. This stuff is all still just set up for uh, the actual Redux code, and you only have to really do this once um, <clears throat> for it to fully work. Oh, and we have to make sure we edit the path to be slash Redux um, <clears throat> instead of slash app so we get to the right path to import our store. So there we go. The setup for our Redux toolkit is pretty much already done and it wasn't that bad. Now we can get into actually creating the um, reducer that we are going to be using to increment our state and read from in order to get the variable um, count. So you can see here, there's a bit of things you can do here. And in their example, the way they are doing it is they're going ahead and they are um, defining a lot of different things in this create slice and they're doing things in something known as a slice so first of all let's go ahead and copy all this code over and go through it one by one go ahead and create a counter.js file and paste all that code that we just saw in there now in order to understand what is fully happening here we have to understand how redux works under the hood so everything is essentially split up into three things when it comes to redux the first thing is known as the state that is simply Simply where you keep your variables and what you define your variables to be initially. So in this case, our state comprises of just one variable and that variable is count and that count is going to be equal to zero initially. The second things that are in reducers are the actions. This is what your React components call when they want something to happen to a variable in the Redux state. So for example, if we have a button that increments the count, we are going to have that button when we click it call an increment action. And the third thing that we have is the actual reducer that does something based on the action that is called. Whenever we call that increment action, we want it to increment that count variable that we have in our store, in our state, sorry, by one. When we call the decrement function with our uh, React component, what we want to happen is that same count to be decremented 
by one. And these are the three major components that goes into Redux. Actions are essentially things that your React components that can call that trigger a reducer to modify the state in some sort of way. Now that we have that understanding, we can go back to the code and sort of see how this, what is known as a slice is broken down. So a slice is pretty much just a something that comprises of your state, your reducers, and then your actions in those reducers. And Redux Toolkit does this differently than regular Redux. If you were using regular Redux, you would have to dis, um, define each one of these separately. However, with Redux Toolkits, they introduce something called a slice. And through this function called create slice, you can define your state, your reducers, and your actions all in one place and in a lot more clean and simpler way, which is one of the main reasons I advocate using Redux Toolkit over Redux. It just makes for a lot simpler, easy to read, and cleaner code. So we can see here, if we go line by line, what they've done is they've named their slice to be counter. This is just helpful for being able to distinguish different Redux stores and different slices between each other. The next thing they've gone and done is they've gone ahead and they've defined an initial state and set all the state variables they have with an initial value. In this case, they're using the value um, they're using the name value to keep track of their count. We can go ahead and change that to count if you'd like to make it more consistent with what we're actually doing. And we can go ahead and change that as we go through the rest of the code. Now, if you, the next thing you'll see here is they have an object called reducers. And this is essentially going to be where you have everything that touches your state and the actions and the reducers that modify it. So they have declared an action called increment. In that action, what they are doing is they are essentially incrementing the state dot value, that variable called value, which we can change the count now by one. The next thing they're doing is they're doing the same thing, but for decrement, we can go ahead and change that to count as well. Now, the third thing they're doing, the third action they have in their reducer that modifies the state is going to be something called increment by amount. And you'll see here, this one doesn't just pass state in as a function, it also passes in a parameter called action, where you can go ahead and pretty much what they've done here is they're saying, we want to increment by a specific amount, and that amount is going to be passed in by our button. We can go ahead and once again, change that state.value to state.count. And we're going to go ahead and look at this after we implement the basics, um, the basic increment and decrement function. Now, the last thing you have to do uh, is export not only your reducer, because we have to pass that reducer into our store, but you also have to go ahead and export all of these actions so that you can call them in your React application. And the way they do that is just by exporting um, and they destructure all of these uh, actions from the counter slice dot actions object. So that's pretty good to know. If you ever want to get all the actions that comes from one of these slices, you just do counter slice dot action. If you want to get the reducer, you do counter slice dot reducer, and that will return the reducer. Now, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and add that reducer to their configure store to make sure that it is available to any uh, uh, component that wants to use it. So the only time you're really going to be touching this file um, with a beginning application of React uh, Redux Toolkit is essentially whenever you have a new reducer. Every time you have a new reducer, all you have to do is you have to go ahead and import that reducer. So I can go ahead and import counter reducer from dot slash counter. And then I'm essentially going to give that reducer a name. We're going to call it counter and make it equal to the counter reducer. And say, for example, if I had another reducer called the user reducer, I could just do something like user is equal to user reducer and import the user reducer from my, uh, you know, user reducer slice. So every time you add a new slice or a new reducer, all you have to do is make sure you go ahead and add it to the store so that it becomes available to every single component um, uh, that is in your application.
Now the next thing we can go ahead and do is actually start replacing some of these variables. So first of all, let's go ahead and instead of reading our state, our count from our react.useState, let's go ahead and replace that with actually getting the count from our application. So in order to do that, um, in, uh, sorry, from our Redux store. In order to do that, we are going to be using a React hook called use selector. And all that's going to do is it's pretty much going to be saying, hey, I want to read this variable from this reducer. So we can go ahead and um, say which variable we want. So in this case, the variable we want from the store is, uh, whoops, let's go back to our counter store, is the count variable. So I want this count variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, destructure count from our use selector hook. And then in our use selector hook, all you have to do is pass in state and take it from that specific reducer that you want it. And if you remember the what we called this counter reducer, we called it counter. So we can just go ahead and say we want it from counter. Now this is how you destructure it. You can also do something like count uh, equals this whole thing and at the end if you want to uh, make it a bit easier to read you can just do a uh, counter dot count so we're specifically saying I want to take this variable from our Redux state specifically our counter reducer and specifically the count variable that lives in that counter reducer so we can go ahead and save that and over here we are now um, displaying the new count so the second thing we're going to do is we're going to replace these buttons. Instead of calling that state variable we had before, it's going to be calling our action that we have in our counter reducer, one of these actions. So for example, what we uh, have to do in order to call a Redux action is first we have to use the dispatch hook. So we set up the dispatch hook by just typing in use dispatch. And now that we have the dispatch hook, we can use this dispatch hook to pretty much call any action from any reducer that we want. So in this case, we're going to be calling a dispatch and we're going to pass in increment. And this increment is going to come from our reducer. And for the second example for decrement, instead of increment, we're simply going to be calling decrement and auto import it. And here we go. Now let's make this a bit bigger. And if I click increment, you can see the state is incrementing. And if I hit decrement, you can see the state is decrementing. So we've officially refactored this into a Redux Toolkit application. So now if you remember, we had one more um, example over here, which was increment by amount. So I'm going to go ahead and create another button. And that button is going to be called increment by 33, for example. And whenever we click this button, what we want to happen is we want to be able to increment our count by 33. So we can see here that what is happening is instead of just taking in state like increment and decrement did to add it by one or minus it by one, it's also taking something in called action. And within action, Action is essentially a variable that Redux allows you to pass in that you can give it a payload and that payload will essentially um, allow you to pass in any value that you want um, and sort of increment the count by that. And that payload, you can make it an object or you can make it in a, a value. And in this case, they're making it a simple value that when you um, pass it in, it increments the count by that amount. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and come over here. I'm going to call the um, the increment by amount function. And in there, I can pass in the payload and I'm gonna pass in 33 as the payload. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and you'll see here, I'll refresh it. When I click it, it increments our count by 33 as much as we want. But that is pretty much how Redux Toolkit works. And if you found value in this video, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment for Net Ninja, and make sure you subscribe to his channel. And if you really want, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel as well. I'm going to be putting out a lot more React Redux content. I also have a huge series on Material UI, which is a UI library for React. So please consider checking me out if you like this tutorial. I hope you're all having an amazing day, and I hope you all stay Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.